Hello friends! Recently you have seen a series of videos from us about gear for beginner photographers. We talked about fixed lens cameras like the Fujifilm X100V and a few others. In the next video we talked about how to shoot with very capable DSLRs for pennies on the dollar by shopping older models. Next was modern mirrorless on a budget. All three of those videos had a couple of things in common. One, they were geared towards people who were just getting started in photography and really wanted to look beyond using their phone as a camera. And two, they were all digital options. Today we're taking a super sharp left turn and talking about a different way to get three very important things. Number one, truly experience the bare elements of photography. Number two, have you using gear, some considered highly collectible at super low prices. And number three, bring a style that's unmatched in the digital world. We are talking about film cameras today. Some would say, and I'd agree, that film photography is really photography in its purest form. We've recently acquired a couple of newer film cameras to add to our collection. We purchased these two cameras at KEH.com, which is a convenient time for me to talk about the sponsor of this portion of today's video, KEH. KEH is the original re-commerce company buying and selling used camera gear. I was a customer of KEH before I started working with them and I continue to go to them to sell my gear and as a source for purchasing used gear. We purchased both of these film bodies, the Nikon FM3A and F6 from KEH, but they have quite a variety of gear in stock. Film bodies like these, but also the latest and greatest mirrorless gear and everything in between. One thing I like about KEH is their clear grading system and the knowledge that they have thoroughly tested the gear prior to selling it to me. I do have affiliate links for you in the description of this video. Using those links helps KEH know to continue supporting this channel, but I do also have codes for you in the description. You can get a discount when you are purchasing gear and you can get a bonus if you are selling gear to KEH. So it's a win-win. I get a small commission, KEH knows to continue sponsoring this video so that I can keep making videos like the ones in this series and you get a discount or a bonus. So thank you to those of you that use those links and thank you to KEH for continuing to support this channel. The two film bodies that Lee just mentioned are the two that we're primarily shooting with in 2022. The Nikon FM3A, mechanical manual focus camera, and this Nikon F6, which was the final film camera, final professional film camera that Nikon produced. It's actually a lot like a Nikon D2X, which we owned uh, previously, but of course the sensor here is full frame 35 millimeter film. But if you look at the back, I'll just show you notionally here, um, you flip this little window down here, this little lever, and it has a menu button. And the menus on this charming LCD screen instead of an LED screen are very similar to what you may have experienced with Nikon DSLRs here in a charming, wonderful, very fast SLR. The other is this Nikon FM3A. We consider this to be the newest, purest form of a manual focus and operation Nikon film camera. I love its clean lines and I like that there is an exposure needle in the viewfinder rather than LED lights. When KEH does have an excellent condition Nikon F6 in stock, they are about $15. $100. What we've seen, especially since Nikon recently stopped producing the F6, is we've seen that price gone go up and down, but it's trending up actually. So if it's something that you are interested in, it might be time to check out some of the purchase options for that. Yeah, Raymond stocked KEH.com until the F6 popped up and we borrowed it for a project, but Raymond couldn't send it back. So we ended up purchasing it. Similarly, we did stock KEH.com for the FM3A because they're considered collectible cameras. Uh, Raymond mentioned that the F6 goes for, you know, right around $1,500 right now. The FM3A goes for right around $1,000 right now. But like I said, these cameras are considered collectibles. Many people will purchase these cameras and never use them, but being collectibles, it really drives the price up. So while Raymond and I will shoot these all day. Uh, let's actually talk about some cameras that are more affordable. Now, film's a different animal 
than digital. You don't need to spend $1,500 or $1,000 to get exactly the same results. I looked up a Canon AE-1, a classic mechanical manual camera on KEH this week, and it goes for about $230. And you'll get exactly the same pictures with a couple caveats as you would with either of the two cameras that we've talked about so far. With film, as long as your camera body is working properly and has the metering and shutter speed options that you require, the images will be no different than a film body costing 10 times or even 100 times more. Why? Because your image sensor is your film. And what works with the film to dictate image quality is your lens. The camera body itself is really only there to meter and to open and close the shutter. You can get the same results with a camera that costs 10 times less or 100 times more anywhere in between different different film bodies. So cost is irrelevant. Use cost like we did to say, well, you know, we like these flagship bodies, but if you just want to get started, look at that AE-1 or a Pentax K1000 or, you know, uh, Nikon FE, FG, something like that. It's going to come down to your choice of film and your lens choice, not the camera body, which is very different than digital, where in digital, the camera body itself has a, a very large role in how the image is rendered. With the chase for megapixels out of the way, that's in your film. A couple of considerations uh, when you're shopping for a film body would be, uh, you know, the lens compatibility or the brand. Maybe you have some older film lenses. That would be a great way to start shopping for, uh, for film bodies. And then the other thing that you might choose to uh, take into consideration would be autofocus, auto, you know, more electronic camera like this F6 versus manual focus like the FM. 3A here. While the FM3A is mechanical, manual focus, mechanical film advance, with the F6 here you have lightning fast autofocus and very fast frames per second just in case you're in that situation where a high speed fast action film shoot breaks out you're prepared with the F6. If that's not going to be a consideration for you, the FM3A or really any sort of film camera up and down the line might be the right one for you. We actually have a video coming up. It is a kind of a bonus video in this series, which we didn't originally plan, but pe enough people have asked us about lenses and what to purchase after you have your initial kit that we are going to do a video about lenses. Lenses specifically for the beginner photographer who may have a kit lens or who may not have any lenses. So that would apply, that video will apply to whether you're shooting digital or film. So watch for that in the next month or so. One of the huge benefits about film photography for, at least for Raymond and I, is the actual artistic experience. You know, sure, Raymond likes to go for those, you know, high contrast, super moody black and white images. You know, he loves that end result, but the process itself is really key, at least for me. Um, I'm much more mindful with a film camera. I'm much more careful and slow and relaxed with a film camera. You know, I only have, 36 exposures say and I may come home with five really well composed images that I really love whereas with digital maybe I'm not quite as mindful maybe not quite as careful because I have what an infinite number basically of images I can take you know I may come home with 500 images that I have to cull through to find those images that I feel like are well composed and that I really like honestly each approach has its place for me. I love shooting digital, but I also love shooting film. I just love photography. Are there some disadvantages to shooting with film? Sure. <laughs> and you'll want to think about whether or not these disadvantages sort of, you know, overcome the process for you and steer you back towards digital. Number one, you're loading your film camera with film. You've got to buy film. You've got to shop for film. It's, it's not as easy as just putting a memory card in your camera and going out and take pictures. There's an additional consideration. Number two, we're in a digital world of sharing images and sharing video like this video right now. If you want to share your film images over great distance, you might want to share them digitally, which is certainly possible, but there's an extra step in the process. Uh, your lab might uh, scan them for you and produce digital images when you pick up your negatives. Uh, we use a couple different processes. We use the Nikon ES2 
adapter uh, which connects to a macro lens that we have and we actually end up photographing our negatives with a, another digital camera so again that's another step in the process uh, we'll put a link to that uh, down in the description below and then another option that we've recently used as well but again uh, we're also with that second option we're also photographing the negatives with another camera there's scanners and other options as well and if it's something that you want to do you'll find the right option for you one final disadvantage or maybe just something to think about is that you will not be pixel peeping with a film image the way you would or might with a digital image you will see grain in film photography we <laughs> i don't know if y'all heard that but that was a big cow we see <laughs> grain in film images and the overall characteristics of film images to be characteristics and even things that we like about film images. So while you won't be pixel peeping, you might like the overall look of the images like we do. I love this bunny photo on Kodak Tri-X 400 with bunny in all of her grainy glory. And one more thing, if you're curious about film but you're not sure whether it's for you or not, there is an app that's recently been published by Richie over at FujiXWeekly.com, and it's called Richie Cam. Richie has devoted a tremendous amount of time to creating and sharing film recipes for Fuji film cameras. These cameras let you truly experience different real world film stock uh, from your camera. But Richie Cam takes Richie's knowledge to a whole new level because he takes his mastery of simulating film in digital formats and takes it right to your iPhone and the results are everything that Richie's famous for. Your phone photos will look almost exactly like they were shot with film, no film camera required. For one, it's literally the only camera app either Lee or I will use now, and two, it may help you decide whether you want to take your film journey into re real film, or if it's a not right now thing for you. Thank you to KEH for continuing to partner with this channel and for keeping a treasure trove of pre-loved and often gently used gear, whether that be film gear or digital gear or accessories or tripods or anything that you might need for your photography. Thank you to those local labs out there continuing to develop film where I can drop my film off on a Friday and pick it up the following week. And thanks to Richie for giving us this super cool app that brings together the art and science of film photography with digital means. And last, thank you for watching. It's gonna be funny if an elk comes by. Here comes a runner. I don't know why I feel like I have to stop when there's a runner coming, but apparently I do. That guy is driving too fast. I do not approve. Maybe that's a cow. I think that's a cow. I just shoved them all in. Oh, this is still recording. <laughs>